What I've got here on the table are two uh, AWS limited thickness butts. Um, these have a quarter inch root opening. They're seven inches long. Uh, these are practice plates, so they're a little narrower than a normal test plate would be for a guided bend. But they are fit up, they are nice and square and flat across the top. Uh, both of these right now are cool uh, to the touch. Uh, I just tacked them together. Um, the plate on the left has been tack welded to the bench at the runoff tab, and that's to ensure that A, it doesn't move, and uh, B, it has a really good electrical ground. These little plates that are underneath here are really just under there uh, for consistency and I guess for reference um, so that it, it looks the same as the other plate. The other plate is not only tacked to the bench uh, for grounding purposes at the tab, but it has tacks on the four corners to restrain it. Um, this is probably the no-brainer of well distortion techniques. Um, it seems to make pretty good sense to most people that if you lock it down, hold it down, tack it, put on a strong back, dogs, wedges, hydraulics, just someone stand on it, whatever you can do to hold that part in place, it's got to make less distortion. Um, and, and I think we know that, but we're going to demonstrate the effects of it here. Um, oftentimes the restraint that you're using is not an external uh, brace bracket, tack weld, it's simply the, the structure of the part itself. So if you're building a crane boom, for example, that has truss work going back and forth along you know, the length of the boom, uh, the boom itself provides its own rigidity and its own restraint. So in that case, a different technique would have to be used uh, to prevent distortions, such as weld sequencing, which we'll get to later. But for now, I'm just going to weld these. I'm going to go back and forth between the two plates. I'm not going to really allow them to cool. I'm running, again, 25 volts, 052 flux coil wire. Um, I don't know my wire feed speed, but it's you know running smoothly. Um, probably around 260 inches per minute would be a guess. Um, and I'm going to weld a bead on one. I'm going to go back on the other. I'm not going to allow these to cool. So recognize that from the first video, by simply running uh, larger passes and keeping the part hot, essentially, is what welding with large electrodes, large passes does. Um, this alone will reduce the distortion to some degree. So I'm not trying to compare that method. I'm just going to be consistent throughout this test to show that the plate that's tack welded down will warp less upon cooling than the plate that wasn't tack welded. And you know, hopefully we don't break a tack. I've made them relatively small, so I don't have to spend all day grinding them off. I think we're done. Um, how long should it take to weld 14 inches of 3 8 butt anyway? Um, we're going to let these cool off uh, completely. When they're cool off, I'll cut them free and we'll take a comparative measurement. All right, I have gone ahead and cut these plates free. They are cold uh, to the touch. The plate that is on the right hand side, I've marked with an R, that's the plate we restrained. Uh, in the overhead camera, you should be able to see the places where this was tacked to the bench. Okay? Um, this plate, at a quick glance, looks to be pretty damn straight, to uh, be honest with you. It's uh, remarkably straight. I can't really check it well with a straight edge because the weld is uh, in the way at this point. But we'll, uh, we'll grind that off and we'll do a quick comparison. The other plate is uh, noticeably bowed. I know you can't see it in the long shot, but in the overhead cam, again, it does have a noticeable bow. That bow would have been worse if we had welded these and allowed them to cool between passes. So in a way, we're using two methods of restraint 
here, or excuse me, we're using two methods of distortion control. The method we used was restraint. The fact that I welded these both hot without allowing them to cool is just so that I was consistent during the test. Recognize that if we had welded them uh, cool, the distortion would have been greater on this side. And on the other side, uh, we may have actually broken the tacks and lost the restraint that we have. Uh, they were just small tacks, and uh, again, it was not a rigid uh, way of holding those parts down. So for a last little comparison, I'm just going to grind a little bit of this weld off, and we're going to take a look with the straight edge and see what kind of a, of a real gap we have, if it's something we can measure. some distortion but again we should see an improvement. So that is the third method of distortion control.